Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Note that we don't charge for the picks on Dwyer Sports Betting. It's a uh, voluntary donation system. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Also, look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Now the line on this Paulie Malignaggi Sean Porter fight surprises me. Paulie Malignaggi is a greater than two to one underdog. I view the fight as a lot closer than that. I don't believe if these guys fought three times that Sean Porter would win two out of the three, right? Um, put another way. Paulie Malignaggi has fought Adrian Broner, Ricky Hatton, Amir Khan, Zab Judah, Miguel Cotto. Let's just say that his level of opposition vastly exceeds Sean Porter's. Also stylistically, and keep in mind, I was bullish on Sean Porter in the fight that got him the title against Devin Alexander. But stylistically, there are problems. Keep in mind that Sean Porter, to me, at his best, knows how to get low. He's 5'7 and can bend at the waist, right? He gets inside. It's a two-handed attack. He can go to your body. He also throws a lot of punches. He's high volume. So he's a guy who can come inside and smother you right against Julio Diaz now keep in mind they fought twice the first fights a draw I encourage everyone to take a look at that first fight the second fight Porter wins the fight really by getting inside on Diaz and forcing Diaz to deal with him up on his body right Porter's excellent at that the problem is Pauli Malignaggi is very hard to hit in the body. Pauli Malignaggi is old school. You know I like old school. He moves in the ring behind one of boxing's best jabs. Very hard to catch up with him, especially when you don't have length. Right? Sean Porter doesn't have a lot of length. It's very hard to catch up with Pauli, who forces you to go through a jab and to catch up with his lateral movement to even have a chance to duck, get inside, and work his body. Let me point out too that here online years ago I used to call Paulie Malignaggi a one-handed fighter. Right? Paulie apparently has had multiple surgeries, I believe at least four surgeries, on his right hand. And there were times where Malignaggi would hardly ever throw that right hand. Well, I'm here to tell you that he throws the right hand now. Right? Maybe that right hand's not hurting anybody. But it certainly looks good when Malinaji, who already is a showman, who already knows how to frame punches for the judges, right? His whole body leans. He's practically dancing out there. It looks great to a judge. When Malinaji is able to do a one-two, when he has a two-handed attack, especially with his movement and his distance game, right? The one-two looks masterful. The scorecards against Zab Judah, a guy in my opinion with faster hand speed than Malinaji, but worse legs. The scorecards weren't close, right? Malinaji won that fight with some bit of a cushion. Well, understand, that's the Malinaji who exists today. The Zab Judah fight was his last fight. Let me go further. I encourage everyone to listen to my pre-fight video for Malinaji against Adrian Broner. This is before Broner lost to Marcus Maidana. You'll see there I called Malinaji a live underdog, right? Malinaji let me down that fight. He lost by split decision. 
But Malinaji clearly left that fight on the table, in my opinion, because he didn't move like he would move against Zab Judah in his very next fight. I believe he got a little bit too caught up in the war of words with Adrian Broner and tried to duke it out with Broner. Now in this fight, let me also say this too about Porter. Julio Diaz doesn't move anywhere close to as well or as fluidly as Paulie Malinaji. Right? I believe, in fact, we saw this before. Devin Alexander can get smothered by a guy who's willing to come inside. And Alexander himself right doesn't move around the ring as well as Malinaji. You have to view Malinaji as really having some of the best rhythm in the sport, right? Because as Malinaji moves, he's pumping a jab. If you jump inside on Malinaji, he can shorten his punch, right? He can even jab down, or he can take a step forward and clinch you. It's very hard to get going against Paulie Malinaji. Very hard. Let me also point out that Malinaji has only been stopped twice. The first stoppage was a non-stoppage. The person who stopped him the first time wasn't the opponent Ricky Hatton. It was his cornerman Buddy McGirt. McGirt threw in the towel. It was ridiculous. Late in the fight when Malinaji had all of his faculties. Maybe Hatton was ahead on the scorecards, but understand, Paulie Malinaji was not getting battered in that fight. The other time he got stopped was to Amir Khan. Understand, Khan has length and a jab that Sean Porter does not have. Right? Let me also say, too, that while Porter can move, You'll notice. Now keep in mind the trick to movement isn't the ability to go from here to there. It's the ability to take your game from here to there. Right? Sean Porter moves. But he doesn't move a lot laterally. He's not a guy who circles an opponent. Take a look at the Julio Diaz film. You're going to see Sean Porter's here. He backs up. He steps a little to the side, right? But he's pretty much in front of Julio Diaz for most of the rematch, right? He's pretty much in front of Devin Alexander smothering him for most of their fight, right? I believe Sean Porter just rhythmically is going to have a hard time getting set and coming in low like he likes to do against a moving target who moves laterally in a way that Sean Porter does not. I get the feeling that Porter is going to find himself constantly resetting in this fight. Now in my opinion this fight is almost unbettable. I do believe Paulie Malinaji is a live underdog. The bet I'm recommending here is a terrible odds bet. It's the over nine and a half rounds at a minus 700, right? In my opinion, this fight's going to go several rounds, right? Probably not worth betting at a minus 700, but it's going to go several rounds. My only pause in taking Malinaji, and I'm not going to pick Malinaji here outright for the fight, is simply the fact that there is an age gap. Porter is a guy who is going to be persistent and is going to throw volume. Right? But, make no mistake, I consider this to be a toss-up fight. Right? I'm surprised at these odds. I'm expecting Malinaji to be able to move and to have his moments. In fact, I'm expecting Malinaji to look more like a showman in the ring than Sean Porter. If Porter gets lazy and doesn't continually pursue Malinaji, and he needs to continually pursue Malinaji, if he stays outside, he's going to get undressed. At a certain distance, only Malinaji will be able to look good and land a long left jab. Right? Keep in mind, too, 
Malinaji has fought guys who've tried to stalk him for 12 rounds. You remember, Malinaji fought Juan Diaz, the baby bull. Malinaji is comfortable, in fact, he's accustomed to fighting on his back foot. Let me also say, too, let's talk about the Ricky Hatton fight. Understand Ricky Hatton had a lot of Mike Tyson in him, right? One of the things that made Ricky Hatton work was the fact that Ricky Hatton just trusted his upper body and would come in like Tyson and would just try to do these head fakes, would run red lights, would run up to you and then start throwing punches. That's not Sean Porter, right? To me, that's a different skill set than what Sean Porter does. Sean Porter literally ducks and tries to get in and duck under punches. Ricky Hatton, by contrast, just tried to dodge punches while standing upright, then came in throwing bombs. Right? In my opinion, too, Ricky Hatton could throw shorter punches than Sean Porter and was more of a wrestler inside than Sean Porter. So I'm not expecting Sean Porter to have the success in the early rounds that Ricky Hatton had against Paulie Malinaji. I believe at the end of the day, this fight is going to be a referendum on lateral movement behind the jab. Right? I believe Sean Porter is going to try to get through Paulie Malinaji's jab and lateral movement. And Malinaji is going to think to himself, Another opponent trying to do this game plan. Malinaji is going to know how to lean, how to, you know, fake out Sean Porter. Keep in mind, Malinaji has these feints that work because his jab has sting. So after you've been stung by a couple of Malinaji jabs and you're trying to bum rush him and he just kind of like feints like that, that faint can stop you dead in your tracks just like the jab. Because you don't know if the faint is real or if Malinaji is actually throwing a jab. I'm guessing that's going to keep Porter a bit on the outside for a while. I think Malinaji will be able to maintain better distance between himself and Porter than Devin Alexander was able to do when he fought Porter. And let's remember, as bad as Devin Alexander looked against Porter, that fight went 12 rounds. In fact, although Porter has a 58% knockout ratio, understand that Porter's last five fights have all gone the distance. So, you're not going to get rich on this fight. My recommended play is the over nine and a half rounds at a minus 700, right? I just think that Malinaji is going to stretch this fight out. I think Porter is going to realize that it's easier to deal with, really, a more stationary opponent like Julio Diaz than it is to deal with movement. Let me just say, too. That movement really is missing a bit from the boxing world today. A lot of boxers are flat-footed. Guys we consider as having boxing skills. Guys like Canelo really are predominantly flat-footed. They don't move that well. In an earlier generation, even heavyweights got up on their toes. You want to see a guy moving around the ring? Look at the... Larry Holmes, Ernie Shavers fight, where Larry Holmes gets decked. When he gets back up and is trying to clear his head, he moves, folks. And this is Larry Holmes, a guy with an excellent jab today. With that jab, he would probably just stand in the middle of the ring and flick, you know, flick the jab. Back in the 70s, he understood he needed movement. Lateral movement is part of the game, or should be. I think lateral movement is going to be one of the reasons why this fight makes it into the later rounds. Paulie Malinaji's lateral movement. I like the over nine and a half rounds. It's terrible. You're getting that at a minus 700. If you want a hedge play, 
Hedge that with Malinaji at slightly greater than two to one odds to win the fight. Right? But understand, to make that hedge work, you're going to have to bet a lot more on the over nine and a half than you are on Paulie Malinaji to even it out. The goal is that if the fight makes it to the midway point of the 10th round, then whatever happens on the other side of the bet, you want to set it up so that you break even at least on the over. Right? What I don't see happening is Sean Porter coming out, having success, getting at Pauli Malinaji's body, and then stopping Malinaji inside of the midway point of the 10th round. Even though Porter is a minus 300, in other words, the sports books are telling you if these guys fought four times, Porter would win three of the four. Even though Porter's a minus 300 favorite, I'm not buying those odds. I'm expecting Porter to have a lot of trouble. I believe the value part of the play is with Malinaji. So, if I had one bet to make, it'd be the over nine and a half rounds at a minus 700. If I were allowed to hedge the play, the other part of the hedge would be the underdog, Paulie Malinaji at plus 205 to win the fight. Okay? You should be taken care of if the fight goes over and you set up the hedge the right way. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also say, too, that that Adrian broner Malinaji fight's interesting because, in my opinion, that fight was on the table. Right? If Malinaji just moved a little bit more, he had a chance to take it. As it was, it was surprising that he lost that fight in his home turf. You would think that a fight that close would go to the hometown champion. Anyway, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. If you see another way to play this, let us know. Thanks for stopping by.